Hey, Balaji. Welcome back, and everyone, too. This is the Heartful Leader series uh, that you're watching, Pearl webinar, and this is part two of the webinar, Influence, Using Influence Versus Control Initiative. And Balaji here, who is the technology executive uh, from USA, in part one, he talked about principles of influencing others, some common traits of a leader, and also about the importance of self-awareness uh, for a heartful leader uh, through his personal stories. Now, today we're going to take a look at examples of someone trying to influence us by authority versus leading by example or inspiration. So uh, good to have you with us, Palaji, again. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Lakshmi, for having me back. I'm looking awesome. forward to the conversation. Awesome, awesome. So let's get started. Now, please tell us, you know, what are the key differences between authoritative leadership and leadership through inspiration? It would be great if you can, uh, you know, give us some real world examples. Certainly. Thank you for that question. Um, the question took me back to uh, early 2000s. One of my well-respected managers, he recommended a book for me. Uh, it was named uh, Good to Great by Jim Collins. Um, the author of the book is, uh, his name is Jim Collins. He was a professor of Stanford Business School at the time. He wanted to answer one important question. What makes a great company great? Um, and, and also go from a good performance to a great performance company. So he came up with a set of criteria with his uh, research team. He said, let's go look at all the publicly traded companies over the last 40 years. And they should have produced at least three times the result of uh, S&P 500. <clears throat> And uh, at least 15 year period, uh, it, they should have outperformed the market as well as their competitors. And when they started to look at these companies, about 1400 of them or so, and they were able, they were able to shortlist it with these criteria to about 11 of them. And, uh, and then they get onto the job of, you know, what made them different or great? How did they become an ordinary company to an extraordinary company? And uh, he specifically told the team, hey, look, uh, don't come back and tell me it is the CEO because I'm looking for a greater insight about what really made these companies great. So the team looked at it for several months and then they came back to Jim and said, Jim, you have to look at the leaders of these companies. You know, each one of the, each one of the leaders of these 11 companies were vastly different from their competitors. They were not flamboyant in, in, uh, as opposed to they were very humble humility is one of the key traits. And uh, another one which they listed as something called selfless, quote unquote, which is very uncommon in a, uh, in a public for commercial companies. Um, what is selfless here? Selfless means, you know, the kind of pay they got compared to the rest of them or how they were completely dedicated to the performance and the purpose of the company right from the start. You know, when you look at how long they manage the company and their history with the company, you can see selfless actions from them, how he inspired everybody. They inspired everybody in the company uh, through their selfless actions. So when Jim digested all of that and he started telling the story across the country through various seminars and, and, and workshops, and he would ask the participants, uh, do you, have you guys come across a person like that? They would say, yes, absolutely. They're community people, teachers, doctors, and even some people have quoted, you know, uh, janitors who are, uh, who take care of uh, the facilities. And these people are all around us, you know, that are, they are selfless leaders who make this country great and make it, the world great. And, um, and that is what we, we strive to be if you want to influence people around us, right? We want to be humble and selfless in our, in our dedication to the purpose. Actually, you know, related to that, there are also another book I wanted to share with you. 
Uh, this is about this is a book uh, written by Daniel. Think about the surprising truth about what motivates us. Uh, that's the book uh, title. And in that, he is talking about you know how you know there is a limit to how much money uh, motivates us. Meaning, the money stops to motivate performance once it crosses being a rudimentary cognitive skills. Meaning. People get motivated by three things in that book he talks about. Like one is autonomy, being able to perform your actions autonomously, self-directed manner, mastery of skills, ability to master at what you, you, you know, what you want to do or get things better at things that matter to you. And then finally, purpose, knowing or doing something which is greater than yourself and knowing what we are doing something for, right? So he talks about these three key um, motivations, where are we three key, three key drivers for our motivations. And, um, and, and once you take money off the table as a motiv motivator, in fact, he gives examples of how money can be detrimental to our motivation in some cases. Um, I, 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 I always been very uh, inspired by some of the stories uh, I grew up uh, hearing uh, you know, about Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, you know, uh, this whole nonviolence movement to achieve freedom. Uh, he was a brilliant communicator and he galvanized the entire country when there was no uh, easy way to reach everybody in the country, right? Uh, I, the one example, it is there in the movie Gandhi as well. You can see that, uh, you know, the salt uh, satyagraha, which he did. He was like, um, he said, uh, oh, uh, you know what? I'm going to go make my own salt uh, in, the, in the nearby town. And he starts walking uh, about 30 miles or something like that. And he, you know, he starts walking. That's it. He does it himself. He just sets example of what to do. And people keep following him. There is a big uh, uh, crowd gathers behind him, you know, trying to make the salt. And then, in fact, that they show, you know, the British generals, they are all like uh, talking in a room. Hey, what do we do with this salt satyagraha? And they all keep laughing about how, you know, some Gandhi making salt in some rural India. I mean, they were like laughing how that is going to bring down the British Empire. Um, and then 30, 60, 90 days later, the entire country stops buying salt. And that starts to affect the British uh, pocketbooks uh, because salt tax was a big thing in those days. And they didn't realize it's a big deal. And uh, they had to arrest Gandhi after that. <laughs> so <laughs> now a small thing, you know, can change everything, you know, and how Gandhi ex exemplified the simplicity, the humility and uh, you know, a purpose which is uh, communicating a purpose which is so big, even in those days where when the, we didn't have all the communication technology we have today. And uh, uh, it's amazing. And, you know, even in this country, uh, we know the story of Martin Luther King and his I Have a Dream speech. Uh, I don't know whether you're, uh, I'm sure you are familiar I've with it. Us, yes. yes. So in in, you know, how he tries to look beyond our everyday bitter division among people, right? The leaders do how rise everybody up uh, from the divisions. You know, there is so much, uh, you know, division among people and fight for nothing. And, and leaders are able to rise everybody else with their vision for the future and aspire for something greater than themselves. And when you do that, the influence automatically happens. Right, and right. That, is, that is the most important thing: a purpose, uh, a selfless dedication to that cause, and our humility can really change um, uh, what we are trying to um, uh, communicate to others. And I'll tell you another example as well. I mean, uh, about five years ago or so, I happened to visit uh, Heartfulness uh, uh, Heartfulness Main Center in uh, Hyderabad in in Kanha. And, uh, and, uh, and I was with, uh, you know, uh, Daji, who is our uh, guide for artfulness. And there was one lady who walked into the room uh, with her mother 
And uh, she said, look, uh, I know I really want to stay in the ashram for 10, 10 days. My mother, you know, there's nobody to take care of her. So she's with me. Uh, she's going to stay with me for the next 10 days. But, you know, she doesn't uh, follow our meditation. She has her own guru. Uh, so is it okay if she stays here and also does her own meditation? And for that, uh, Daji said, of course, you know, please let her follow her own guru. Uh, just accept us as your servant, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was like so touched by his perspective. And, and, you know, we are all here thinking always divisions and, you know, how we are different from others. But great leaders, you know, look at things which unites us, not divides us. You know, and always they keep the purpose in mind. We are here to serve humanity, not benefit from that, right? And that's Absolutely. what makes a great leader great. And uh, and that's what touches me uh, every day. You know why I I I, I try. I know I, I aspire to be one of these leaders one day. Awesome, uh, Balaji. I, I I like that. It's true. True leaders really have this attitude of uh, service uh, and very lovely story that was. Coming back to this uh, authoritative uh, leadership, um, you know, there's certainly an element of control and curtailment of freedom felt, right? Like how does that kind of um, have an impact on the theme and the outcome? So if I understand your question correctly, uh, you're asking if, if, if there is a leader who is authoritative in nature, what, what, what happens to in those kind of scenarios? Uh, Correct. What happens to the outcome? For example, if you, uh, you know, the, the thing about uh, that story you shared about uh, the British rule in India yeah. and Gandhi's, uh, you know, the salt march, which was considered to be a very small, uh, incident and they thought perhaps this is not going to have any effect at all right yeah. to start with and the British but the British was there in the name of saying that yes they're going to take the country forward but then of course there was some element of control uh, to the people uh, right um, so I was just trying to you know we talked you talked a lot about um, leadership uh, which inspires us and take things forward. So what about the authoritative leadership? How is that perceived? Yeah, I'll tell you one thing about authoritative leadership. It, it certainly produces result. It is certainly produces result, but in the short term, you see, it is in the short term, you will get what you want, but over a period of long term, you're, it is not transformative. It is gonna, you know, we have seen this over and over and over again in our history. If you look at human history, the authoritative leaders make a lot of progress, but guess what? S slowly, it just, it does, it fails to inspire the humanity. It fails to carry on the la light to the next generation, to the next generation, to the next generation. It always, history judges them very, very harshly. Uh, it's just the way it has been. No matter what great things they did, it doesn't matter. The authoritative leaders may have produced a short-term result, but in the long term, it just doesn't inspire the humanity to take that message forward. Um, so when we are in the transformation business, when we are in the long term, uh, in other words, uh, infinite games, you know, we talked about that finite games and infinite games, um, right? When we are in this infinite game, um, the, the authoritative leadership fails. But I, having said that, right, authoritative leadership does work in a corporate, uh, corporate setting as well, producing a short-term results, which short-term companies employ all the time, right? And- uh, Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is Interesting. very- Interesting. Now, do you have some examples, uh, you know, the, the corporate world, talking about that, yeah. where such leaders exist, you know, yeah. can you, uh, talk about these leaders and how exactly, uh, you know, do they actually follow just one set of leadership style all the way through? No, actually, that it turns out that, uh, you know, uh, leaders like, you know, you would have heard about Steve Jobs, how, 
uh, he is very authoritative in his personal interaction. Anybody who comes in, a, in you know, in an, in an act, interact with him one on one. But as a as a leader of the company, right? Uh, he is he produced, you know, he even the industry, I should say, he had a, 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 a purpose or a, a vision which transform transformed the entire uh, personal computing industry. Uh, the, the designs he made that. The, you know, the designs he inspired, he didn't really make a lot of them. He was inspiring all of that. You know, he he puts visions which are like, you know, hey, we want to wake up in the morning, put a ding in the universe. You know, he, he comes up with uh, the vision and the purpose, which is larger than uh, what everybody thinks about. Larger than life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Larger than life. And uh, those leaders uh, certainly produce the results, even though in their personal interaction, they may come across... Uh, you know, authoritative uh, uh, and in a, in a smaller setting. Uh, but, you know, there's one classic example of this, uh, uh, this iPhone apps. Do you know when they first released the iPhone, there were no apps? I mean, that he was completely opposed to it. And he I said, see. no way. Because one of the things he was obsessed about was that, uh, you know, he, he, the, he, the phone needs to be simple. It cannot have too many complications. As soon as you let other people write apps to the phone, he thought that it will make it very, very hard to use. And people will lose that simplicity of using that phone. So he was very authoritative. And later on, you know, it, it, you know he was able to re listen to reason, you know, because he is not authoritative for selfish reasons. He was like, you know, so obsessed about creating a simple product, right? And, yeah. and uh, people are able to see it. You know what I mean? He's authoritative, yeah. annoyingly, yeah. you know, annoyingly authoritative in a personal interaction. But, but if you take a step back, right, you always say, okay, he was not doing it for himself. He was just doing uh -huh. it for a greater purpose or the larger vision, right? Uh, yeah. It is a funny balancing act uh, when is. you with leaders like that. It is true, Balaji. I've heard of something. I don't know if it is uh, uh, right or wrong, but um, I, I'm not even sure where I heard it from. Uh, yeah. As you say, a good balance of authority and uh, democracy is needed. So democracy when it comes to decision making and authority when it comes to execution, uh, that single focused mind to execute uh, the decision that was taken, right? Something yeah. like that I've heard. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, just wanted look, to share uh, that. oh, absolutely. I mean, you are talking about the execution of the entire company uh, as opposed to an individual, how they are able to influence others. Uh, the influencing from my, from my, uh, you know, from my own personal experience and the examples I've seen in the industry, the vision and the purpose and complete selfless dedication to the purpose exhibited by mm -hmm. those leaders absolutely cause people to come to work every day and make a difference. Um, absolutely. They, they, people are willing to look beyond personal uh, misgivings, so to say, for the larger purpose. Uh, and we see that over and over again. As long as the leader is committed to the cause beyond being selfless, right? Yes, creating that's a win-win situation uh, right. for all parties concerned, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, of course we have nowadays, you know, Elon Musk is another example of uh, a visionary leader. You know, he wants to go to Mars, so obsessed about that. And uh, he continues to uh, create innovations which will make us more efficient and much more, um, uh, you know, the whole electric car revolution and electric, you know, the whole uh, electric and, 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 and autonomous and, there are several innovation keeps coming out of uh, you know Tesla and SpaceX. You can see that he's so obsessed. He works hundred hours. I don't know, hundred and twenty hours. I don't know how many hours he works. It cannot be because he's selfish. You know, he's not. You know what I mean? Nobody yeah. is selfish that they work one twenty hours a week, yeah. but they are so obsessed on their purpose. So people, right? Obviously, who work in those companies are inspired to by those kind of leaders who are who are committed to their causes. You know, that's, that's what inspires them. 
absolutely well said and um, there were also some questions about the of the book that you had uh, shared in your you know part one of mm -hmm. uh, influence and this uh, was a book from Stephen Co Coves um, and it was called the seven habits of highly effective uh, people so uh, those were again you know great influencers who have who are visionaries and as you say who worked uh, you know for a cause really creating that um, the, the win-win situation for everyone involved so i just wanted to share that at this point moving on balaji sometimes we may have uh, to lead a team without a proper title a managerial title that gives us the authority so to speak um you know so what do you do in such situations you know you have to lead a team and we all know in real life that when we don't have a title uh, people don't it's difficult uh, to you know get the task done or people to follow our instructions so are there other sources of authority you can you know leverage to inspire the fellow team members to follow your lead you know, what oh that absolutely be? i mean in fact all the things we just talked about all the people we talked about they never led by authority in the sense of positional power uh, martin, martin luther king did not have any position uh, you know uh, nor did uh, uh, mahatma gandhi did right he was never a prime minister of india president of india but the entire country knew everybody followed him, no matter what your title is. He, they were, he, he was not the king of the British Empire. Um, you know, uh, these leaders, they don't, uh, they don't have titles. They inspire through who they are by example. And that completely applies in a corporate world. People follow people who think that, or who they think that who are really working selflessly for the greater cause. And, uh, uh, I, I had one of the managers used to tell me that uh, he worked for Sun Microsystems. There was this one person who invented Java programming language and everybody else, you know, the, the teams won't follow the VP of engineering or SVP of engineering. They will follow this person who invented Java. They will say, if he says, jump off the cliff, everybody would do it. <laughs> so you do not have any position. Yeah. Skills and knowledge expertise in the subject goes, do you think that helps as well? In creating uh, yeah. that influence? No purpose. Again, you know, all those things are results. Results happen, but the per when a person is so purpose driven and so selfless about their own purpose, I think they create results along the way. It, you know, now the question is oh, was Gandhi popular because he created, uh, uh, you know, he, he, gave, he, he led people to freedom? That happened later, in fact, in life. That, that was not the reason why he was so people followed. In fact, nobody even recognized him for a Nobel Prize. Uh, and, you right. know, Nobel uh, said that in a regret letter, you know, that's the biggest mistake they ever made. So, so those are results and they recognized after the fact. The people follow people way before any of that happens. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, I mean, to, talk, to answer your question about uh, do we? How do we influence people? The answer is exactly what we just talked about. You know, complete dedication to the cause and selflessness and humility. People will follow. Uh, that's my experience in my life. That's absolutely true. I think it's definitely not authority, not title. Uh, you know, not power. Uh, as you, as you very rightly said, and certainly it's time consuming for sure. Uh, you know, for this to happen, and one needs to have a lot of patience and. Empathy, I guess, in this uh, process. Um, whether it is, you know, creating influence through inspiration or control, wouldn't a person feel manipulated? You know, manipulation somehow it's like a, it has a sinister um, tone to it. You know, how do you uh, see the fundamental differences? Sorry to say the same answer again and again. But it also comes back to the same question. Is manipulation uh, for selfish reasons, people feel cheated, right? Uh, and that's how people feel when there is an authoritative leadership and which is who's driving for selfish causes, right? 
and uh, and people feel cheated. They are manipulated or they were forced to do something. And they people resisted. People resisted either openly or passively, aggressively, and so on. So making sure our intention and our our uh, in the way we communicate and and what we stand for for our values really makes people feel willingly doing what they did not because they manip it was manipulated because they willingly chose to be part of that cause right um that that's as long as we create that as a leaders uh i think we are doing a fantastic job uh of of leading oneself most importantly and and then obviously anybody who 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 are who are following that cause Lovely. That intention uh, matters, right? What drives uh, the influence? So yep. uh, going Absolutely. beyond the selfish cause and for the collective uh, cause, uh, where all parties obtain results they want. So that's uh, wonderful what you're sharing, Balaji. So I think we've discussed enough on this topic and uh, hope it was useful to all watching and listening us today. Be aware that you know we are always sending messages to others, even without words. Our feelings are being communicated through our thoughts and the words we choose, the tone we use with other people in all areas of our life. So to become self-aware, mindful and heartful practices are always recommended to uh, leaders, uh, for a heartful leader for sure. Um, so now in our Pearl webinars, we always offer heartfulness meditation. We welcome all to give it a try and be for yourself. So let's start this experiential process. It will last for about five minutes or so. So I welcome everybody to join me now. So sit comfortably and close your eyes. Let's begin with the tools. Wiggle your toes and feel them relax. Relax your ankles and feet. Feel the energy from the Mother Earth Entering your legs, through your ankles, moving upwards, relaxing the calf muscles, knees, thighs, and hips. Now feel how both your legs are completely relaxed. Breathe in, breathe out, and relax. Now relax your seating area and stomach. Breathe in. Breathe out and relax. Now feel the energy in your back. From the top of your back, the bottom. Feel your entire back is relaxed. Breathe in. Breathe out. And relax. Now 
Now relax your chest and shoulders. Feel your shoulders simply melting away. Now let the energy flow into your arms. Relaxing the upper arms, lower arms, hands, all the way to the tip of the fingers. Now feel how both your arms are completely relaxed. Relax your neck muscles. Release any tension you may be holding there. Now let the energy move upwards into your face, relaxing the jaw, mouth. Nose, cheeks, earlobes, eyes, forehead, all the way to the top of the head. Now feel how your whole body is completely relaxed. Now gently draw your attention to the heart. Imagine a source of light that's already in your heart is illuminating and pulling your attention inwards. You have distracting thoughts. Gently brush them aside and treat them as passing clouds. Be very gentle with yourself and do not try to concentrate. Please remain still and quiet with your attention on the light in the heart for a couple more minutes until you hear me say that's all.
that's not You may gently open your eyes or feel ready to do so. So we must have all heard that meditation does increase our awareness over a period of time. And if we observe, we will find that people with high self-awareness have more direction, purpose, and influence, and success in their professional and personal lives. So anyways, if you would like to take this meditation further, the heartfulness meditation, you can get in touch with us at pearl at heartfulness.org and we will get you connected with the trainer in your area or country. And a circle back, Balaji, as a closing remark, some of my takeaways from this webinar was that, uh, you know, from all you said, that um, the vision of the leader and working for a collective cause um, where when a leader can create a win-win situation for everyone, such a person is really an effective leader and can create such great influence. And I know we talked in the previous session that trust was very fundamental uh, to this, although we didn't touch upon that in this session. The other thing is that authority really, uh, you know, without influence is useless uh, in some ways. So these are these were my takeaways from the session. And I'm sure each one of you must have had yours uh, as well. And, uh, you know, any, any closing remarks, Balaji? No, I think you wonderfully summarized it. Um, we look to our leaders to unite us and, uh, and we as leaders should aspire to elevate the humanity and human consciousness where it unites everyone. And, uh, and that's the heartfulness message and that's Daji's message uh, as well. And, uh, and that's what we should be aspiring to be in our personal life as well as our professional lives. Uh, how we can elevate the human consciousness to another level of unity. Beautiful unity and uh, harmony, right? It's uh, yes. beautiful what you say. And I'm truly appreciative of the Heartfulness uh, team and Balaji for continuing to be part of the uh, Pearl journey. Uh, the series particularly was very well received by our audience and we're truly grateful for that. Um, you know, our yeah. team always strives. Sorry. I said thank you for the opportunity. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we always strive to add more value to our viewers and listeners. And we appreciate your comments, your feedbacks for us. So please, if you can spare some time and leave your comment below in the comment section, that'd be very, very helpful, actually. And our next webinar is exclusively for children. It's a puppet show for the festive times ahead. So from, this is actually from a famous puppeteer, Tim Gosley, who portrayed uh, Basil, the polar bear at Sesame Street, uh, a role which he, I think, performed for several years, nine years, I believe. So details are on our website. Please go look at it and uh, stay tuned for it. We look forward to seeing you then. So take care and enjoy your day. <laughs>